Hello and welcome to the program. The long-awaited Canada-Ukraine free trade agreement has officially come into force. It took nearly six years and several rounds of talks before negotiations concluded in the summer of 2015. And the deal was signed during Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau's first official visit to Kiev in July 2016. Joining us in the studio to discuss this historic moment and the driving force behind it from the Ukrainian side is Natalia Mikolska. She's the Deputy Minister of Economic Development and Trade of Ukraine. Welcome. Hello. So, first off, what changes do you expect to see now that the trade has come into force as of August 1st? Uh, actually, the agreement provides, first of all, for diminishing of import duties from both sides. 98% of Ukrainian exports could be imported to Canada duty-free. Just to give an example, previously when Ukraine was exporting to Canada apparel, our actually uh, goods were subject to 17% of duty, and now it's zero. Uh, Ukrainian uh, machinery was subject to 5 to 7 percent duties. Now they will be paying actually zero. Ukrainian vegetables and fruits were subject to 4, 5 percent import duties. Now they are subject to zero. So that's, that's huge. You know, that, that kind of the, the difference in numbers between 6 and even 4 and 0 is, 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 is mind baffling. Now, we, we spoke to um, uh, Canada's Trade Commissioner earlier. Um, uh, he's the U Canada's Trade Commissioner to, U to Ukraine. And we, we, we talked about what this would mean in global terms. So um, we have that soundbite for you now. Let's take a listen. Ukraine's trade will deepen and become stronger. Canada and the EU and Ukraine and the EU also have free trade agreements. So there's a, a trade triangle which third countries from Asia, from Middle East, um, from Europe will invest in that uh, strong working um, global value chain. Now, Mr. Martin just uh, said global value chain. He, he, he called it uh, Canada, Ukraine and the EU. Now, what does this mean in, in, in practice? How will this affect, you know, the small businesses that potentially produce very good products in Ukraine, but uh, don't have the finances to bring their products to the bigger market in, in the EU and in, and in Canada? Generally, free trade is about trade of goods or services, but uh, although it does not provide any provision on investments, what we see in all free trade agreements, it boosts investments from the country actually you are trading freely with to, to another country. So what we expect, we expect Canadian investment into Ukrainian economy in order to place here production facilities for internal market, but not only, also for exporting to Canada and to European Union, with whom actually Ukraine already have a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement. The same we expect from the EU business to place in Ukraine production facilities to produce goods to export to Canada and to EU. And actually, what do you said? I mean, what does it mean for small and medium-sized business? It means investment not only in terms of financing, receiving additional funds, but it also investments uh, in terms of know-how, technologies, uh, distribution networks, actually bringing Ukrainian business to more higher level. The other aspect to this, actually, uh, global value chain is that Ukrainian raw materials and Ukrainian semi-processed goods, for example, as tomato pasta, as uh, juice concentrates, can become a part of the value chains, can be used in Canada in order to produce some ready-to-consume goods and then to be actually sell, sold, sold in Canada and abroad. Just to give you an example, within these five months, we have a huge increase of uh, export of Ukrainian juices and juice concentrates to Canada. We have increase of 2.3 million US dollars That's of huge. Ukrainian export. Mm. And what we see is that when Ukrainian small and medium-sized businesses are coming to Canada with a very small delivery, then this delivery actually is increasing month by month. That was the case was uh, actually with the juices. That was 
the case for the special uh, automobiles that are used in, in uh, special weather condition, actually to help to work with the with the with the high snow and etc. And 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 Canada is very well known for that because we uh, in in Canada we have. A very harsh climate, some would say. So, would you say that small and, <clears throat> excuse me, medium-sized businesses in Ukraine, do you think that they know about this opportunity uh, of of how much they could expand uh, in uh, in this new market? That is why I'm here on, on actually on air, and that is why we are promoting the all free trade agreement that Ukraine has. Because actually, in order to win in the lottery, you need to buy actually a ticket for that. And uh, therefore, we need to provide more information to Ukrainian small and mid-sized business. But we already have uh, great success stories of Ukrainian uh, producers of uh, give me apparel. One. Give me, give me one success story. Ukrainian producer of actually apparel is selling to Canada and was highly expected with their partners for free trade agreement to come into force because that's a huge economy for them, not to spend 17% you know, like to pay duties. Now they can actually get it duty free. The same example is uh, Ukrainian machinery that, that were delivering a very small, small deliveries to Canada, but now they are increasing it. The sunflower oil Ukraine produced in Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian butter that we can see that actually the deliveries to Canada is increasing, Ukrainian confectionery. Oh, well, uh, I mean, the kind of opportunities are, are limitless in a way because this, this is a completely new market for um, Canadian, uh, Ukrainian businesses in, in Canada. But what strategy does your ministry currently have um, in the long term to help Ukrainian uh, business owners be, be more informed and actually, as you said earlier, buy that lottery ticket? You know, get uh, yes. a stake. Definitely we have a strategy and we are already working from the date of we concluded the negotiation in order first to raise awareness and to educate Ukrainian business about opportunities in Canada. The same to actually provide more information about Ukraine to Canadian business. Because, you know, in Canada, Ukraine is still associated with babusia's borscht and vyshevankas. So gr and grandmother's, our, grandmother's yeah. soups and, you know, yeah. ethnic clothing. Yeah. Very, very concrete um, yeah. things to be known for, yeah. I, I suppose. And our main goal is to educate Canadian business that Ukraine is producing unique, uh, actually, goods. Uh, for example, furniture, jewelry, uh, machinery. We have a high engineering potential, uh, information uh, technology services. And what we are doing, we are trying to put together Canadian and Ukrainian business. Uh, we already had uh, two big events uh, in Canada-Ukraine relation. First one was a year ago, a forum in Canada was further business-to-business -business meetings. Uh, the forum actually gathered about 500 participants, including Canadian business. And we have already a number of deals from that forum. Oh, As success! Well. <clears throat> success! I mean, I mean, investors, direct foreign investment coming into Ukraine. That's that's kind of the main yeah, goal. Not only direct foreign investments, but also a deals in terms of bringing Ukrainian goods to Canada. To, to Canada and showing what Ukraine can actually provide. Yeah. So, um, in terms of um, international investors, now, now, uh, some say that Ukraine's agriculture sector, which is obviously Ukraine's biggest uh, export, uh, uh, Ukraine has been called the the Europe's Europe's bread bread basket, um, it it lacks brand confidence. There's 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 no confidence uh, from foreign investors, and and uh, some say that that they're wa wary of uh, Ukraine's market engagement and uh, experience. And there's a bit of uh, dis distrust in the rule of law sometimes. But um, so we've spoken to uh, the uh, deputy business ombudsman here in Ukraine, and he talked about some of what he's his government his his body has been overseeing in the business sector. So let's take a listen. We actually maintain the uh, ongoing current statistics, but uh, it's more than 10 billion hryvnias uh, out of uh, already more than uh, 2,000 complaints that we received so far, uh, whereby we uh, uh, sometimes issue individual recommendations. So uh, the deputy ombudsman, he just mentioned a few figures and how the overseeing body has been tackling corruption and has been tackling some of these com complaints, obviously. Um, would you... Some of uh, you've you've mentioned this business forum that Ukrainian businesses have been taking taking part. Would you say that some of these investors are wary? 
you have direct contact with with a lot of the kind of heavy hitters in the business. Um, would you say that, that they are wary of investing in Ukraine? Uh, I think that the investors' confidence in Ukraine is increasing from day to day. All of the investors are aware that reform has, that has been done in Ukraine for the last three years, uh, are much more that has been done previously, definitely all of them want more. Because if they want to invent, to invest a big money in Ukraine, they want to have more confidence in what is going on. But we see that step by step, actually, Ukraine is increasing this confidence. There are a number of problems. And therefore, actually, we have an investment promotion office established with the government of Ukraine. And we have an export promotion office established with uh, Ministry of Economy in U of Ukraine in order to help foreign businesses to get the right contact into Ukraine and in order to help them to facilitate their contacts with the governmental officials and in order actually to facilitate business between Ukraine and Canada. I see. Well, thank you so much for, for this brief chat. I'm, I'm sure we'll be looking forward to more things that you are uh, hoping to accomplish with uh, Ukraine's Ministry of Economy. So thank you so much for uh, coming in today. Thank you. So we have been joined by Natalia Mikolska. She's the Deputy Minister of Economic Development and Trade of Ukraine. And we've been speaking about the Ukraine-Canada Free Trade Agreement, which came into force on August 1st. You're watching UATV. Yeah.